we better humble ourselves when it comes to our uh, confidence in our interpretation of scripture. We better not be jumping to be teachers of the word, even leading Bible studies, even leading small Bible studies. We better not be jumping there too fast. I received a prophetic word from Prophet George Davy. Um, he released a prophetic word. He said, God has given you an apostolic anointing. And God says, God warns about this. The teachers will be judged uh, uh, more. God spoke clearly to me, I need my body of Christ to restore these offices now, to accept these offices. You could be hearing from the devil and teaching the devil's, what the devil wants through his word like he did with the Pharisees. That's really serious. For God is bringing revival to this nation, but it's not going to look like how the church is right now. It's going to come in a new way. It's going to come not in a new way according to the Bible. And that's what we got. We have that happening throughout today um, when we see um, false accusations coming towards anointed ministers of God, when we see exposed videos every single time. It's scripture, 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 scripture. Twisted, 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 twisted. Every single time. They do, they do exactly what the Pharisees did. Hello everyone, welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long. Well, Catherine Crick is far worse than I thought she was, and that is saying a lot because about a month or so ago, we did a video exposing her, and the video was called, uh, Catherine Crick is a Fake and a Crook, and this video proves it. And in that video, I showed that she was charging seed money to cast a demon out of a little boy. Here's a little snippet from that clip. So in the spiritual realm, there's laws. Everything that comes through my hands for the last two years. Ten percent. God's saying more. Okay. Because ten percent is with what's 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 God's. So now we need to sow specifically for His deliverance and speak. This is for His deliverance, and and a good amount. If there's a good amount given to psychics, it needs to be a good amount because that's the key that needs to unlock His complete freedom. And it needs to be what his power is. Like Fivefold Church, for example, you can sow here. And so you saw from the end of that clip, she is mentioning to the woman that she can give to her own church, Fivefold Church. Now, Robin and I are not the only ones who have been exposing Catherine Crick, of course. Uh, John Elving has done a great job on his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Jake Elliott, another friend of mine, is doing a very good job uh, exposing Catherine Crick and Chris Rosebro. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, or actually it's been about a month now, has put out a video exposing her as a cult leader. Watch. So now I'm going to, to share this prophetic word that God has for the body of Christ. And we already know it's a false prophecy. Already know, because she fails all the tests. And has for leaders in the body of Christ. So the prophecy for leaders, I guess that would apply to me, as well as all pastors. Okay. It is not okay to just sit comfortably in your churches, sitting comfortably and not supporting what God is doing now. Mm. How dare you sit comfortably in your church and not support Catherine Crick? Not saying anything, not saying even hallelujah for a new move that God has brought. This is not okay. This is not God's move. God is asking you to say something. I am. I'm warning the body of Christ like scripture tells me to do so that people will mark and avoid you and not be swept up into your new cult. To stand with God, to not fight God anymore. If you oppose Catherine Crick, you are fighting God. To not try to stop his move anymore like a ceiling that has been put over the move of God, trying to stifle the move of God. This move of God is going to reach the entire world. It's not a move of God. 
It's going to every corner of the world. It's going to every platform. It's going to break through every barriers. This move of God is not optional for the body of Christ. It's not optional. You either join or you're opposing God. I repeat, this move of God is not optional for the body of Christ. When, the, when it was time for God to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt and then go into the promised land, God wasn't asking them if they wanted to come. I'll put a link to Chris's video in the description and you can watch the entire thing. But ever since we have put our videos out, Catherine Crick has been doubling down on her false teaching. She's been doubling down on her seed sowing doctrine. She's been doubling down on her commitment to Jeer Davy, her false prophet. And she's been doubling down on her uh, rec on this recruitment to her new cult. Some of the things she says in these next few clips that I'm about to show you is jaw dropping. I literally was sick to my stomach when I listened to her twist the word of God like you're about to hear. Watch this. Philippians 4.18. At the moment, I have all I need and more. We read this scripture, by the way, last Sunday. This is Apostle Paul speaking. And he is speaking this. He's speaking this to the people in the church here in Philippi. He's saying to them, He's thanking them for giving, for sowing into his ministry. He's thanking them, and he's saying how much it meant to him and how important their, their sacrifice, their offering was. And so he's saying, because of you, I have all I need now and more. Because you have given offering, I am generously supplied with the gifts that you sent me with Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Now, with, now many people know this scripture very well, this scripture that says, this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches. Many people know this verse very well. But the, many people don't know the context of this verse. It really matters, the context. It really matters when Paul says this. He's saying this to the people who had just sowed offering, made sacrifice. And then he says this word. He's not saying this generally to everyone. He's saying, what he's saying is, your seed is releasing needs and blessings from God to come upon your life. Talk about horrific. Talk about twisting God's word. That is just absolutely sinister, what she is doing with the word of God. She says, Philippians 4.19, which says this, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. She says that's, that doesn't apply to everyone in general. That applies only to those who sow financial seeds, because that's the only way God's going to be able to bless your life. Folks, this is absolutely evil. And we need to go over to that passage, and we need to take a look at what that passage actually says, because I think you're going to find something very interesting there. Let's take a look. All right, so we're in Philippians chapter 4, and... Verse 19 says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And Catherine says that we've misunderstood that verse. That doesn't apply to every Christian. It only applies to those who sow financial seed. Sowing seed gives God the ability to be able to work on your behalf. Except that's the, the, the passage itself in its context, is going to debunk that idea. Watch this. We're going to start here in verse 2. Paul says, I entreat Judea, and I entreat Senchi to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be made known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Now watch this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Okay? So first of all, let's think about what, what, what Catherine says here and what the Apostle Paul says here in this passage. You're anxious. Your needs need to be met. You have specific needs in your life that you, you can't pay your bills, say, or, or perhaps you are struggling with an illness or whatever it is. You have a need in your life, right? You're anxious. What is the remedy? If sowing a seed, a financial seed, was the remedy, the Apostle Paul had a perfect opportunity to say that right here, but that's not what he says. He says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. The answer for our anxiousness is prayer. And then look what Paul says the result of that is. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Paul's saying, if you have a need, pray. That is how we are to, uh, you know, bring our needs before God. That is how we are to get our needs met. Not by sowing a financial seed. That is law. That's not gospel. That's absolute law. That's bad news. It's not good news. Um, Jesus also says, uh, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And that's a prayer we are to pray daily. Give us this day our daily bread. Not sow a financial seed so that I can bless you. So this passage that once that once that verse that Catherine quoted in Philippians chapter four, once verse 19 is put back in its context, you can see this has nothing to do with sowing financial seed. First Kings 17.10. So um, God is saying to prophet Elijah right now, go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. But why doesn't God just send food from the sky for Elijah? This is how God advances his kingdom. I mean, this is how God brings provision for his servants and everything that's needed for the work of God is through people. This is God's system. This is God's way. We sh- I talked about this last week, how the ministry of Jesus was financially supported by women, by disciples. Jesus wasn't just like snapping and money burst in his hands, you know, because this is God's way. It's still God's way. Hallelujah. So I'm guessing that you are thinking the same thing that I'm thinking. But wait a minute. God did feed Elijah from the sky. She says there, what, you know, God, God, could have, God didn't just feed him from the sky, but God did feed Elijah from the sky. In the very same text that the widow of Zarephath is mentioned, 1 Kings chapter 17, God feeds Elijah from the sky. I'm going to start in verse 1. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe and Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. And the word of the Lord came to him, Depart from here and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the brook of Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the brook Cherith, 
that is east of the Jordan, and the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And after a while, the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. Now, we don't know how long Elijah was there at the brook before he went to Zarephath, to the widow. We just know he was there until the brook dried up. The point is, God did feed Elijah from the sky, and I bet dollars to donuts that Catherine Crick did not even read that entire chapter. Because if she did, she would have never said what she said. But it gets worse. Watch this. This is the principle of sowing and reaping when you sow into the kingdom of God that I'm talking about. And I'm trying to teach you the power of. She sowed into the kingdom of God. She brought the provision to the servant of God, the ministry of God, representing the church. And she reaped so much supernatural provision continually in her life. She was about to die because she had a crumb left. And all she did was offer the little small loaf of bread just something small that she had, the small thing that she had. And God gave her so much more and just kept giving her so much more. It never was running dry. So, so the world can think this is foolish and stupid. Why is God asking this poor woman to give her last little crumb, crumb of bread before she dies? That's the world, how the world sees it. But this is the kingdom of God principle. God knew that as she sowed, she would reap. So God was saving the widow. This was God's grace. He saw this widow was in need, and he knew the way to receive financially the spiritual principle was for her to sow. All right, so we are in 2 Kings chapter 17. We're going to be looking at verse, we're going to start in verse 8. There's something very interesting in this passage that I want you to see. Um, that debunks what Catherine Crick said. Now, a little bit of context here. There is a famine in the land, all right? Catherine asked, why did God choose this poor widow? Why didn't God go to someone rich? Because there was no one rich. There was a famine in the land. The only one that might have been considered rich would have been Ahab and... um, Jezebel. But, <laughs> you know, other than that, there, the people of Israel were starving. There was a famine, a severe famine in the land. So there was, there was no rich person to go to. Now, there's something, like I said, very interesting in this passage that I want you to see. So I, we'll start in verse 8 here. Then the word of the Lord came to him, arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Why did God tell Elijah to go there? Because the brook dried up. Remember, the ravens had been feeding him. He was drinking water from the brook, and as the famine continued to increase and get worse, the brook dried up. He says, behold, all right, we're still in, we're still in uh, verse 9, behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So God had already ordained that Elijah would be taken care of by this widow of Zarephath and had already ordained that this widow would would have enough to take care of his servant, Elijah. This has already been, was already planned by God, all right? Um, Let me just, I want to do a little word study here for this word right here, commanded. Now, um, before well, before we do that, let's do this. I, I want to go over to my text comparison tool here. This is one of the best little tools in uh, Lagos. And I'm going to open this tool up in a floating window. And we're going to go down to, uh, ver- or going to go over to verse 9. And we're going to look. We've got uh, the ESV here, of course, uses the word commanded. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. The NASB. 
Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. The New King James, see, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. Lexham English Bible, look, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. Now, the NIV uses directed. I believe that's the, that's the version that Catherine was using. Young's literal translation, I have commanded there a widow woman to sustain thee. King James, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. NET, I have already told a widow who lives there to provide for you. Very interesting way to translate that. And then the Holman Christian Standard, I have commanded a widow, a, a woman who is a widow to provide for you there. So this is the word here, I have commanded. Let's do a little uh, Bible word study here. All right, and you can see what it means to command, cause, to appoint, to be commanded, to forbid, to set an order. And if I click on this, to command or to cause, we can look and see all of the passages of Scripture. As a matter of fact, you have this little more here because there are so many. This word is used so many times in Scripture. If you look up here, 492 times this word is used. And so God had already commanded this widow to take care of Elijah. So um, she didn't have to sow a seed offering. This is not about sowing a seed. So apart from a financial seed, God could never have blessed this widow, This, uh, according to Catherine. And God can't bless you like he wants to. And the really blasphemous thing that she says there near the end of that clip, that it was God's grace. He knew he, he knew he had to do this so that he could bless her, because he is bound by laws, according to Catherine Crick and others who teach this kind of seed-sowing teaching. God is bound by laws. And folks, this is word of faith. This is just word of faith theology. That's all it is. So she is doubling down on that. Now, she talks about this whole idea of sowing seed as not being a transaction. This isn't a transaction, she says. Watch this. And sometimes God can be asking you to, maybe you are, maybe you are regularly sowing, but maybe God is asking you to sacrifice more. And then that need will be released when you sow more in this area. So if you have a certain need in your life, spiritual, physical, and you're just seeing this is not coming, you're wondering, what, what should I do? What do I do? This is a problem. So make a sacrifice to God. Whenever you sow, blessings are released. You need a blessing in this area. Sow so that you may reap this. Amen? So you can make a specific seed, like say it with a name, like, God, I'm, I'm sowing this for this need. I believe that you are releasing this to me. Now remember, last week I shared that, that there is never such thing as a transaction or paying God for something to release something. It's the principle of sowing and reaping. Don't get it twisted. Please tell me how you're not to get that twisted. This is an absolute blasphemous teaching. How is a person sitting in that congregation going to work that out in their minds? How is a person listening to a Catherine Crick video going to work that out in their minds? That this is not a transaction. It is a transaction. She can, you know, sugarcoat it with it being a principle, but it's not a principle that is taught by the apostles or Jesus in Scripture. It is not something, Jesus does, it, this is not a tit for tat. You do something for me, I'll do something for you. Of course, there is the idea of sowing and reaping. I don't mean that you know, you don't reap what you sow. The Apostle Paul says that, but not, God, God is not waiting for you or me to sow a financial seed 
in order to be blessed or to have our needs met. It's, it's not taught in Scripture. You have to twist the Bible in order to make this work. This is awful, it is horrible, and there's no way that her people or people watching her videos are not going to uh, think that they're, they, they have to do something to get God to answer or to, to, to meet their needs. The Bible makes it very, very clear that we our needs are met by asking God, by praying. Look at the Psalms. Just read the Psalms. Do Does David or any of the other psalmists mention, if you want God to bless you, you have to make sure that you sow a financial seed? No, it's nowhere in the Psalms. You, you have uh, David crying out in the Psalms over and over again for God to protect him, for God to meet needs in, that, that he has. You have the other psalmists doing the same. You don't have this teaching in Scripture, and I've already mentioned the Lord's Prayer. This is a prayer we're to pray daily. Give us this day our daily bread. That is how we are to have our needs met. We are to pray and ask God. He promises He will hear our prayers. Now, I also mentioned that she was doubling down on her cultish idea that if you are not following her movement, you are not following God. Make no mistake about it, Catherine Crick is trying to form a cult. Watch this. If they receive you, they receive me. So if they're not receiving the, the disciples, if they're not receiving the apostles, if they're not receiving the servants of God, they're not receiving God. Because this is the way that God wants to come. With the prophetic word, with the word God is speaking, accepting and receiving. If they're not going to receive this, that this is what God is doing. They're not receiving God. And it's really sobering. They're having ministries, you know, they're preaching Jesus, but they're not receiving him in, in his new wine move. They're not receiving his new servants that he's raising up. You can't do that. You can't pick and choose parts of God to receive from. You have to receive his servants, his, his generals, his leaders, and his body. So if you're not following that movement, you are not following God. She made a, a clip on her Facebook page. Oh my goodness, it's been 20, the year was 2020. Um, and I think it was in June. I can't remember the exact month. But you want to talk about crazy sounding stuff. In this next clip, you are going to, uh, you're going to be, your jaw is going to drop. Watch. God spoke so clearly to me that we were called to bring revival to this nation and to bring this revival through the five fold ministry through the five offices that we read about in Ephesians 4 11 for it says that Jesus gave us when he ascended he gave us some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors some teachers he gave us all of these to equip the body to empower the body to help perfect and mature the body so that we wouldn't be tossed by like children, tossed back and forth by waves, that we wouldn't be deceived by the devil, but we could be strong, powerful vessels of God, the entire body. These offices are needed in the body of Christ. God spoke clearly to me, I need my body of Christ to restore these offices now, to accept these offices. For God is bringing revival to this nation, but it's not going to look like how the church is right now. It's not going to come through how the church is right now. It's going to come in a new way. It's going to come not in a new way according to the Bible, but in a new way of what we have seen here on this earth in the present day. It's going to look like the Acts Church. 
God is bringing revival through what looks like the Acts Church. What the Acts Church speaks about, where there were apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Where there were signs and wonders and miracles and prophetic ministry, casting out of demons, healing of the sick, raising of the dead. The whole body empowered and walking in the power of God. That's how God is bringing revival. And this is the large assignment that God has given us here. God spoke clearly to me that the name that we should carry, the name that represents this vision and assignment from God is fivefold church. Fivefold church to represent who we are, what God has called us to bringing the fivefold ministry to the body of Christ, restoring it to the body of Christ. Folks, if God actually spoke to Catherine Crick, then you and I need to pack our bags, move to Los Angeles, and join Fivefold Church. Because if we are not doing that, we are not obeying God. The, 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 the entire thing is just insane. So she, uh, from the first clip, you can tell she's doubling down. And I just wanted to play you that uh, the, the, the clip there from uh, her Facebook page. Now, I want to thank my friend Jake Elliott for sending me the information and sending me that clip. I'll put a link to his work down in the uh, in, in the description. Um, he's done some good work and he's been uh, he's been exposing Catherine Crick for a while. Um, but folks, you can see she is just she's desiring to start this big movement. That's what she wants to do. All right, let's head over and look at Catherine Crick's finances, um, because I think you're going to find it very interesting about how much money Catherine made or her church, Fivefold Church, made uh, in 2022. And you're going to see here that Catherine really wants to be a leader of a movement and make a lot of money. Let's take a look. This is 5F Church. You can see it right here. All right. Um, and this is the uh, 990. Now, I want you to see what 5F Church made in the prior year, $814,484. That's what was brought in. And then last year, uh, the prior year would be 2021. 2022, $2,181,243 brought in to Fivefold Church. So. That is, uh, folks, that that little church, and it's not a big church. It's, you know, it is growing, but it's not as big as some churches. That church has brought in $2 million uh, in 2022. I'm going to be very interested to see what it brings in in 2023. The <laughs> spiritual apple doesn't far fall fall far from the spiritual tree because Jir Davy is a word of faith heretic that is living in the lap of luxury off of his people there in Tanzania. He is uh he is stealing money from his congregation and Catherine is doing the same thing. Now the uh clip that I'm going to show you has a lot of cuts in it and by the way all of the clips that have certain cuts in it I did not do Catherine did him them herself. But anyway, this is a clip of her doubling down. Watch. We don't get to choose our Elijah. We don't get to choose how we want to receive impartation. We don't get to go I want to find the most popular non-controversial minister. And so then I'm going to insert myself there. I'm going to try to make connections there. It cannot work that way. I know for sure that I am here today walking in my calling and walking in the anointing because I was obedient to where God had called me to be planted. Underneath the spiritual father, he had called me to be planted underneath. The American Western church, there's a lot of religion. There's ethnocentrism. There's many with just biases, too. I've seen all of those things make some people 
reject my spiritual father and in turn reject me. This is the thing about religion is that the more that someone is like Jesus, the more religion hates them. There's nobody the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious ones hated more than Jesus. Today, the more that we are like Jesus, the Pharisees of today, the religious spirit, the more they will hate us. So I've seen that hatred. I've seen that jealousy spirit, that Pharisee religious spirit. Reject my spiritual father. So all those people who say that to me, who have said that to me in the past, and who will say it to me in the future, I say these familiar words that Jesus said one time to a, to a Christian. Get behind me, Satan! So I want to talk to Catherine Crick's followers. Because those who are members of her church, those who follow her and watch her videos, you are being duped. Because what she is doing is she is using thought-stopping devices to make you not think critically. And the Bible makes it clear that we are to think critically. We are to test the spirits to see whether or not someone's prophecy is correct. We are to be like the Bereans in Acts, where they checked on the Apostle Paul to make sure that what he was saying jived with Scripture. That is what we are to be doing. But Catherine Crick is using thought-stopping devices in order to keep her followers from thinking critically. Let me give you an example of um, some thought-stopping devices. This comes from my friend Steve Kozar's website, The Messed Up Church, uh, and I'll put the uh, link to this article in the description. But here's an example of a thought-stopping device. When you've been taught that theology or doctrine divides, this is a big thought-stopping device. This permits and promotes the unhindered teaching of bad theology or doctrine. Another stop thought-stopping device. When you've been taught that you shouldn't touch God's anointed, how often have you heard that? That is a thought-stopping device designed to keep you from looking at Scripture and comparing what God's anointed is saying with Scripture. Um, another thought-stopping device. When you are taught that any new theological idea is okay because you shouldn't put God in a box, or because God is bigger than your theological box. These are all thought-stopping devices to keep you from analyzing what Catherine Crick is saying, or what any teacher uh, that uses these devices is saying. Here's a good example of that now. Watch. So that's a religious spirit the Pharisees were carrying. The religious spirit is still around today. This is a big way that the devil comes to try to keep to try to keep people not knowing God's love and to try to keep people from being freed, from being healed, and knowing how amazing God's love and surrender to him and being used by God in power is the religious spirit. And so this is one of the ways the religious spirit comes, making things so complicated. I know like, it's like there will be new different topics that the religious spirit will um, speak out, like a Pharisee disruption, <laughs> like what happened in the times of Jesus, that will happen today. For example, I there there's one that's been going around recently, like, um, should you tithe? Should you not tithe? And it's like this, this confusion complicating the word of God. This It's the religious spirit trying to make people look at the word of God with a Pharisee lens, analyzing it with this religious lens, rather than hearing from the Holy Spirit when reading the word of God. So watch out for that religious spirit. That is a good example of a thought-stopping device. Folks, Catherine Crick is an evil woman. She is sinister. She twists the Word of God. She is not to be trusted. Again, as I said in the last video, she's to be marked and avoided. Thanks for watching.